This is chapter 2 of the 12th episode of The Worst Entertainment Companies. Through this series, I try and shed a light on the poor management and mistreatment idols are subjected to by their companies. I find it important for us as fans of K-pop to be aware that the industry is far from perfect and to keep the conversation going on these issues. This is an episode on Cube Entertainment. It will cover the history of Cube Entertainment and how their favoritism towards certain soloists and groups has negatively impacted their artists. Realistically speaking, the majority of people would not consider Cube Entertainment to be one of the worst entertainment companies. However, this goes to show that Cube succeeded at pulling the wool over the eyes of the consumer by its established reputation as a reliable company that grants its artists creative freedom. And while Cube does allow their idols to self-produce and self-compose, they also have a tendency to sabotage and replace the groups that they believe aren't profitable enough. Yet not many people have spoken about how poorly Cube Entertainment manages their artists. This is a two-part episode to be able to tread into detail since Cube has managed quite a few artists. If you haven't already, I highly suggest you watch the history of Foreman before watching part two because it will provide the necessary context and put certain events into perspective. This part of the episode will cover the history and disbandment of Beast, the negligence of CLC, the recent lawsuit with X-101 member Lai Guanlin, and how Cube Entertainment's reliance on self-producing groups is affecting its artists. With that being said, it is time to unravel the complexity that is Cube Entertainment once more. Once Cube Entertainment had established its success with its first generation artists, such as 4 Minute, Gina, and Beast, the company ventured out by setting up two separate labels, one being A Cube, founded in 2011, becoming responsible for managing the girl group A Pink, the second one being Cube DC, launched in 2012, who managed the boy group B2B. However, neither of these labels would last, as Cube DC would merge together with Cube Entertainment in 2014, putting Cube in charge of managing B2B. At the end of 2015, Luen bought 70% of shares in A Cube, making it the sole owner of the label, therefore separating itself from Cube Entertainment and becoming a distinct label under Luen, eventually changing their name to Plan A Entertainment. From that point on, Cube Entertainment would continue without any subsidiary labels. The first soloist to debut under Cube Entertainment was Gina, debuting with I'll Back Off So You Can Live Better in July of 2010. Gina promoted under Cube Entertainment for the years to come, releasing hits such as I'll Get Lost, You Go Your Way, Black and White, and Too Hot. When Gina's contract expired in 2015, she decided not to renew it, eventually leaving Cube Entertainment in February of 2016 with plans to continue her career as a singer. That was until the idol was struck with a tantalizing scandal that would damage her image. In 2016, rumors spread of an idol accepting money in return for intimate favors. The identity of this idol was kept a secret, but netizens quickly traced it back to Gina, as it was hinted that the idol had recently left their entertainment company. Gina was called in for police questioning, and she stated that she never sold her body and that she had been tricked by someone who she had considered a friend. Gina had turned to the friend for financial aid, and in return this friend asked for Gina to go on a blind date with a friend of theirs who supposedly was a big fan of hers. But it turned out that the man had ordered this friend to offer Gina the money under the guise of it being a blind date when the man actually had underlying intentions. Gina ended up being charged for prostitution and was ordered to pay a fine of 2 million Korean won. Shockingly, Cube Entertainment didn't speak out in support of their former artist. The most reporters got out of the company was a representative expressing their confusion, stating that Gina couldn't possibly have been facing 
financial difficulties as a profit she had gained over the years was sufficient. This scandal unfortunately led Gina to quietly retreat from her life in the limelight. This lack of support for their artists would become a recurring theme, affecting all of their artists in some capacity. After the success of Four Minute Cube Entertainment would plan to debut its first boy group, the group would be introduced through a documentary on MTV titled MTV B2ST. The group consisted of members Chun Hyung, Tong Woon, Yo Seop, Gi Kwang, and Du Jun. The media initially mocked the idols, giving them the nickname Recycled Group, as a few of its members had previously failed to start a solo career or to join groups such as 2PM and Big Bang. The group would go on to prove the media wrong as they became one of the most awarded and critically acclaimed K-pop groups of all time. In 2009, the group's name would be changed to Beast and would make their debut on October 15th of 2009 with the album Beast is the 2BST, which probably means best, for which they promoted the title track Bad Girl. The album sold 10,000 copies in its first week of its release and sold around 40,000 copies by the next year, this being a remarkable number of sales for a rookie group. Their success wouldn't stop there as the group won the Rookie of the Month award in December of 2009. Their second single, Mystery, gained them a second Rookie of the Month award. 2010 would become an incredibly eventful year in Beast's career when they released the album Shock of the New Era. With Shock being its lead single, the release of Shock would become a pivotal moment in their career as it would bring along a lot of success and recognition for the group. They won first place on M Countdown with the title track Shock and won the Best New Artist Award at the 2010 Soul Music Awards. That same year, Beast would also release the album's Mastermind and Listen Go On Again. Both managed to claim a music show win and performed well on the charts. By December of 2010, all three albums combined had sold over 170,000 copies. This made Beast the only rookie group to sell over 100,000 copies in 2010. In December of that year, they also were awarded with the Best New Artist Award at the 25th Golden Disc Awards. Beast's success would only increase in the next three years of their career. The success of Shock allowed the group to break into the Japanese market, with the Japanese version of Shock selling 29,000 copies and it peaking at number two on the Oregon Weekly chart, becoming the highest ranking debut of a foreign artist at the time. In May of 2011, Beast returned with their first full-length album titled Fiction and Fact. The album peaked at number one on the Gaon chart once again and managed to sell over 100,000 copies. By the end of the year, Beast's accomplishments were acknowledged by the Gaon Music Awards, the Golden Disc Awards, the KBS Music Festival, the Mnet Asian Music Awards, and the Mellon Music Awards. They even received praise from Korea's Minister of Culture for bringing on the Hallyu wave abroad. Not only did Beast receive recognition from the Korean public, but they were also successful in Japan, as their first Japanese album titled So Beast sold over 26,000 copies on the day of its release and ranked at number two on the Daily Organ album chart. The group was also awarded the Best New Artist Award at the 26th Japan Golden Disc Award as an acknowledgement of their success abroad. In 2012, Beast released their fifth mini-album, Midnight Sun. A large portion of the album was written by member Toon Hyung. The album ranked at number one and entered the Billboard World Album Chart at number 15 and managed to sell over 140,000 copies. The group received another Bon Sang Award as well as the Artist of the Year Award at the Melon Music Awards. B's second full-length album, Hard to Love, How to Love, was released on July 19th of 2013. The album was written and composed by Jun Hyung and his co-writer. Maybe Cube Entertainment's fondness of self-producing idols is rooted in Jun Hyung's creative liberties. But that aside, the album performed well and was acknowledged by several award shows like the Golden Disc Awards, the Melon Music Awards, and the Soul Music Awards. Beast would continue to see success with their releases throughout 2014 and 2015, 
While the group was continuously doing well on the charts, Beast fans grew wary of member Hyun Sung's dedication to the group, and rumors of an attitude problem started spreading as Hyun Sung appeared to be absent during a fan meeting in September of 2015. At the time, Cube Entertainment stated that Hyun Sung was unable to attend the fan meeting due to personal reasons. But some time later, a photo of Hyun Sung at a cafe with another woman surfaced. This allegedly happened around the same time the fan meeting was supposed to take place. From that point on, video compilations of Hyun Sung displaying attitude problems started to be created by fans to support the claims of this supposed attitude problem. Two years after these events took place, Hyun Sung reflected upon his own behavior in an apology issued to his fans. I was stubborn about my own affairs. Even when I listened to what other people had to say, I'd immediately focus again on my own stubbornness and pride. So I made it hard for my members and other people around me. The wall between me and the members built up slowly and instead of choosing harmony, I chose to grow distant. I slowly lost the ability to control myself and showed bad attitude in public, including on stage. I thought that immature image of myself was me enjoying my youth. I thought all that was me being cool. Now I look back on it, I'm deeply regretful. In 2016, it would be announced that Hyun Sung would leave Beast due to creative differences. Hyun Sung would become a solo artist under Cube Entertainment and Beast would continue with five members. Beast would then release their third full-length album, titled Highlight, in June of 2016. As the expiration date of Beast's contract started to approach, rumors and speculation about the future of the idols began to grow. When the day came, it was reported that all five members of Beast collectively decided to leave Cube Entertainment and made the decision to continue their career under their own label named Around Us Entertainment. They expressed their gratitude to Cube Entertainment as well as CEO Hong Sung Sung through a statement expressing that both entertainment companies will maintain an amicable and cooperative relationship. There was uncertainty, however, about whether the group could continue under the name Beast, as it was trademarked by Cube Entertainment. A representative of Around Us Entertainment went into discussion about this with Cube, hoping for a favorable outcome. But it seemed that Cube Entertainment was unwilling to give up on the name with the reason that they had grown fond of it. And while this may be true, it turned out that Cube Entertainment had a hidden agenda. Cube Entertainment experienced a massive financial loss in 2016, losing around 5.7 billion Korean won, when they lost both their pioneer groups Beast and For Minute one willingly and the other unwillingly. It is reported that Beast made up 45% of Cube's total sales. The consequences of the actions were critical. The company was now desperate to recreate the success it had lost in order to gain back profit. In February of 2017, Cube Entertainment reported its peculiar plan of reforming Beast as a three-member group. The reformed Beast would see the introduction of two new members and the reintroduction of original Beast member Hyun Sung, who had originally left the group in 2016. But Hyun Sung seemed unaware of Cube Entertainment's plans and he said the following on his Instagram. What are they talking about? This is the first time I've heard of this since I was born, and I don't plan on rejoining Beast either. I used to think that singers giving explanations through Instagram was uncool, but I just couldn't leave this alone. The original members of Beast were shocked by this announcement as well, as they were still in discussion with Cube Entertainment about the trademarked group name. We are taken aback. Truthfully, we were still discussing the issue of Beast's trademark up until yesterday. We never imagined that such news would be reported this way. We will have to discuss with Cube Entertainment once more regarding this matter. The plans of reforming Beast went as quickly as they came, or so it appears as it was never spoken of again. Afterwards, things went on as planned, Hyun Sung continued his career as a soloist, and Beast re-debuted under the name Highlight on March 20th of 2017 with Please Don't Be Sad, continuing to release songs such as Calling You and Can Be Better during the remainder of 2017 leading up to the members' military enlistment in 2018 and 2019. 
but then Jun Hyung was urged to leave the group in 2018 after his involvement in the Burning Sun scandal, where he admitted to watching illegal videos sent to him. After a two and a half year long hiatus, Highlight made its return as a four member group on May 3rd of 2021 with a single accordingly titled Not the End. B2B will not be a part of this video as there isn't much information on the group experiencing poor treatment under Q Entertainment. But if you do have any additional information on B2B's experience with Cube Entertainment, please feel free to leave a comment. From what I could personally gather, it appears that B2B is mostly satisfied with its management as the group has had a successful run under the company, with all seven members renewing their contracts in 2019. Although it is worth mentioning that Ilhun decided to withdraw from the group on his own volition, in December of 2020 after being under investigation for use of illegal substances and was later charged for violating the Narcotics Control Act. B2B has been promoting with six members ever since and recently participated on Kingdom Legendary War after the members completed their time in the military service. As the expiration date of 4 minutes contract approached, Cube Entertainment geared up to debut another girl group. To contrast 4 minutes' tough image, the new group would take on a brighter concept. The group would go by the name CLC, which is an abbreviation for Crystal Clear. The members Sungyeon, Sunghee, Sorn, Yeun, and Yu Jin would start off their career with street performances in order to raise money for children with disabilities. And this went well for the group as they were praised for their musical abilities, gaining the group a steady fanbase before debut. CLC would then officially debut on March 19th of 2015 with Pepe off the group's first album, First Love. The group also made their television debut on M Countdown that same day. While the album ranked 9th on the Gaon chart, CLC's Pepe only managed to peak at number 143 on the Gaon chart. This was in contrast with Cube's previous groups, 4 Minute, Beast, and B2B, whose debut singles had all managed to rank within the top 25. This had little to do with CLC and more with the oversaturation of cute girl pop concepts at the time, with groups such as A Pink, Lovelies, Oh My Girl, and G Front being the frontrunners of this concept. Not to mention that Red Velvet and Twice, two girl groups from the Big Three, had just stepped foot on the K pop scene, making for extremely tough competition. CLC was at the wrong place, at the wrong time, with the wrong concept. A few months after their debut, CLC would be faced with their first scandals, making matters even worse. Yeon came under fire for disrespectful behavior, drawing a slew of negative attention to the group. After the group's debut, CLC starred on their own reality show, called CLC's Queen Game. One of the episodes centered around variety shows. Senior group B2B was brought in to help the rookie group prepare for variety show appearances. At one point during the episode, B2B asked the members of CLC to show off their personal talents. When Yeon was asked to show her personal talent, she refused, shoving her water bottle towards one of the B2B members. Yeon then went on to show her Egyo anyways, however netizens found this behavior unacceptable as it showed a lack of respect from CLC to their seniors. This caused netizens to write the members off as rude causing the group to lose some of its initial support. The group would make their first comeback just two months later with Like. The song ranked at number 173, but the album question managed to peak at 9 once again. But these sales were significantly lower in comparison to their debut album. CLC was in a tough spot, their numbers were declining and they couldn't seem to quite catch the attention of the general public. In early 2016, CLC returned with high heels. During this time, the group saw the addition of members Elki and Unpin. 
Q Entertainment revealed that Unbin was initially planned to be a part of the original lineup, but was later cut when the group's album suffered from production delays. The introduction of Unbin to the group proved to be a challenge as she was contractually restricted due to her participation in Produce 101. Therefore, she wasn't allowed to promote with the group on music or broadcast shows or to appear in its music video. Q Entertainment's solution to this issue was to either let Unbin join promotions after being eliminated or to postpone the comeback in case Unbin joined IOI. Cube eventually set their plans aside and went on to release an edited version of High Heels without Unbin in it, and so the group promoted without Unbin. High Heels did chart slightly higher than the group's previous releases, but in turn saw a decrease in album sales, with around 2,737 copies being sold. CLC then made their Japanese debut on April 13th of 2016, releasing a Japanese version of their album High Heels. In May of that year, the group returned with No OO, this being the first time CLC could promote as a seven-member group. While the release of No OO did see an increase in album sales by 2,000 copies, the rankings of both the title track and the album started slipping on the charts, ranking lower than before. Despite their continuous efforts, CLC was flying under the radar. But the Japanese public did take a liking to CLC when they released their second Japanese album titled Charisma. The release gained recognition from the Japanese audience, with the album peaking at number 9 on the Oricon Weekly chart and even securing them their best ranking when it peaked at number 2 on the Tower Records Weekly chart. Playing into their success in Japan, the group held their first solo fan meeting in January of 27 at Tower Records in Tokyo. But besides this, Cube Entertainment didn't do anything to venture out into this market, despite there being a clear interest. This would become CLC's final Japanese release. It was then, in 2017, that CLC went through a drastic change in concept, when they released the EDM track Hobgoblin. The color palette of its corresponding music video was noticeably darker, and the members had taken on a more mature look. It is said that this change in concept was only possible now that for a minute had disbanded and also because the members of CLC had advocated for a change in concept. Hobgoblin was in fact co-written by ex for a minute member Hyuna. Commentators even went as far as calling it a for a minute reject. Nonetheless, Hobgoblin put CLC's name on the radar. This would also be the first time a CLC album entered the Billboard World Album charts, while Hobgoblin itself peaked at number 4 on the World Digital Song Sales chart. The success of the comeback would even allow the group to hold their first fan meeting in Korea. People were now intrigued by CLC's mature concept, and were likely anticipating their next release. But what happened next was a fatal mistake. Where Are You Now, released in August of the same year, was drastically different from Hobgoblin, both musically and conceptually. The release took inspiration from 90s girl groups such as SES and Finn KL. As beautifully captivating as Where Are You Now was, the conceptual change was jarring to new fans. While longtime fans might have appreciated it, casual listeners were longing for the mature concept that had managed to gain their attention. And instead, these fans were now left questioning CLC's musical identity as the group seemed to lack consistency. Consistency being the key word here. If CLC wanted to make a name for themselves, the group needed to be consistent. The fatal mistake in this is that CLC couldn't pull off this change in concept yet, considering that the public's perception of the group was limited to Hobgoblin. So, the conceptual change led to disinterest, and this was reflected in the group's album sales, with album sales from Chris Style to Freesome dropping by over a thousand copies, resulting in the group wrapping up their promotions for Who Are You after a mere two weeks. CLC's mature concept saw its return with the release of Black Dress on April 1st of 2018. The comeback was well received. 
Black Dress ranked at number 11 on the Billboard World album charts and at number 12 on the Gaon album chart. The release of Black Dress also marked a significant increase in album sales for CLC, with it selling double the number of physical copies of their previous album, becoming their highest selling album at that point in their career. CLC also gained the Next Rising Star of Asia Award at the Dada Daily Award Ceremony in Thailand, most likely owning their success to Sorn, CLC's Thai member who often promotes the group in Thailand. To follow up on the success of Black Dress, CLC was said to have a comeback in the summer of 2018. The comeback was teased in CLC's reality show where the members are shown recording the title track as well as by the members themselves when they posted photos on their social medias posing with roses, hinting at the concept of a comeback. The release, as explained by CLC, was aiming to find a middle ground between CLC's old and current sound in order to appease to all fans. But in a shocking turn of events, it would be then revealed that the comeback would have to be delayed. In the reality show, the members express their fed up as they find themselves constantly apologizing to fans for having to wait so long for a new release. It is important though to note that Cube Entertainment's poor managing abilities are not to blame for this. But the issue lies with producer group Moss Pick. The producer group were often recruited by Cube Entertainment to produce music for its artists. The title track that would become known as La Vie en Rose was initially intended to be performed and promoted by CLC. But since Moss Pick is its own entity, they are entirely independent and therefore are free to sell their music to whoever they please. And the song was eventually sold to Off The Record Entertainment, becoming Eyes One's debut song. But this also meant that the plans of CLC's second 2018 comeback had fallen through. Going into 2019, CLC paired up with Soyan, the leader and producer of Idol, who had found instant success with their self-produced debut La Tata in 2018. The title track No would become the result of this collaboration. The release perfectly embodied CLC's mature and elegant concept the public had come to love. What followed was a whirlwind of success, with the music video for No surpassing the views of No Oh Oh and Where Are You Now in only 24 hours. The album number one had also entered the Billboard World Album Chart, ranking at number five, and No finally earned CLC their long-awaited first music show win on the show on January 12th of 2019. Not only that, but number one also surpassed the album sales of all of CLC's previous albums. One might think that after this upward trajectory and CLC's increasing album sales, it would be the perfect time for the group to release a full album, especially since the group had been active for nearly four years and even more so would be the perfect opportunity to feed into the recent success of No. But instead, what followed was a disappointment, as the only thing CLC would release from that point onwards were single releases. The first being digital single Me, released on May 29th. The single peaked at number 5 on the US World Digital Songs chart becoming the second best-selling K-pop song that week in the US after BTS's Black Swan. The second digital single was CLC's Devil, released on September 6th. The song was reminiscent of CLC's early retro sound and was well received for the most part, except for those who criticized the music video Devil for bearing any similarity to the concept of Red Velvet's Russian Roulette, released in 2016. Regardless, it was another successful release for CLC, as Devil peaked at number 7 on the US World Digital Songs chart. Almost an entire year after the release of Devil, Cube Entertainment announced that CLC would be returning. The comeback was prefaced by a redesign of CLC's logo with corresponding official colors, official colors that fans had been waiting for nearly five years for. 
this minimal burst of effort might have evoked a spark of hope in some, but they would soon be disappointed to find out that CLC's upcoming release would be yet another single. Helicopter was released on September 2nd of 2020. This release proved to be another success, peaking at number 8 on the Gang chart and surpassing all of CLC's previous releases in physical album sales, with the album selling close to 19,000 copies in Korea alone. But over time, fans became fed up with the lack of consistent and limited releases from CLC. But as it turns out, they were not the only ones. CLC's Elki shared this frustration to the point that it pushed her to request for her contract with Cube Entertainment to be terminated. In the legal letter released in December of 2020, it is stated that while Elki fulfilled her obligations as stated in the contract, Cube Entertainment failed to do the same, violating multiple terms and conditions, such as paying Elki for her acting activities. The profits from those activities were collected by Cube, but no statements of income were shown to Elki. The document further states that Cube Entertainment informed CLC that Cube Entertainment would no longer provide developmental support for the group, and did not plan any activities for CLC or Elki in the foreseeable future, further pushing Elki's decision to terminate her contract with the company. Elki then posted a handwritten letter to social media expressing that she was discontent with the course of her career, saying, I feel that I haven't been a successful artist. At least, I'm not very satisfied with what I have done for you. That's why I realize that I can't let it be anymore. I want to do more for my loved ones, and I would like to show you all I have. In an interview with the Hong Kong newspaper, Elki further elaborated on Cube Entertainment's lack of support for CLC. When the agency said it would not invest in CLC, I felt there was no reason to stay. As an idol, I only want to greet fans through my work. If I'm not allowed to do that, can't give it to fans, I can't accept it. As a result, Elki's contract would officially be terminated on February 3rd of 2021, putting an end to her time as a member of CLC. But what had caused the sudden discourse within Cube Entertainment? In the past nine years, Cube Entertainment had been directed by at least three different CEOs. Co-founder Hong Sung Sung had to step down as a CEO in 2012 due to an illness, but remained active within the company. Cube Entertainment went through significant changes in 2020, and these changes would affect its management. On February 21st, Cube Entertainment signed a contract with VTGMP, a cosmetics and media commerce company, acquiring 30.61% of shares in Cube Entertainment, taking over as the biggest shareholder instead of IHQ. Afterwards, Cube Entertainment underwent another significant change, as two members of shareholder VTGMP were appointed as the new CEOs of Cube Entertainment in March of 2020. Former CEO Hung initially seemed thrilled about the partnership, but this quickly turned into concern. Hong took to Twitter to explain that the partners seemed to have no interest in working with him, accusing them of creating conflict within the company, saying, quote, by doing things that even a gang of thugs wouldn't do, end quote. Things got so dire that co-founder Hong Sung Sung ended up leaving the company. In a statement posted to Twitter, Hong expressed his devastation. I just didn't want the hard work we put in together at Cube to be in vain. And since I was happy beyond measure while working, even during my long illness, there was no way for me to express in words how disappointed and despondent I am. I will now leave Cube, which I had put my life on the line for. These structural changes tie back to Cube Entertainment's lack of support shown to CLC. With VTGMP now being the biggest shareholder as well as being at the head of the company, it now held power over the management of Cube Entertainment's artist. It is likely that the new shareholder viewed CLC as unsuccessful, 
and therefore refused to provide developmental support for the group moving forward. This is only further proven by the fact that CLC member Sorn was solely responsible for producing her digital solo release run. Sorn wrote the song, recruited a producer, a video director, and a makeup artist on her own. Sorn didn't receive any financial or promotional support from Cube Entertainment, with Sorn having to take it upon herself to promote the solo release on CLC's social media. Not to mention that Cube Entertainment did not arrange any live performances to promote the release. Furthermore, it is said that Cube Entertainment presented Sorn with an ultimatum, imposing that the music video for Run had to reach 5 million views in order for Sorn to be allowed to have any more solo activities in the future despite funding the release herself. The lack of support of CLC isn't a recent issue either. This has been a recurring issue throughout CLC's career. In a live stream in 2017, Sorn talked about the pressure of performing well while being part of a K-pop group, that it is the group's responsibility to perform well and not the company's. Sorn recalled something that a staff member had once said to her. Just every time I go out on a show or every time CLC goes out, on the show and suddenly like we don't get the feedback that we want and when we don't get the feedback that we want of course the company is going to be like oh well you guys didn't do well enough and it's our fault because the person who has to do well is us not the company right the company can only help you this is a thing that one of the staff in here told me his job is just to put us on stage that's his job but stuff that happens after they put us on stage it's all our responsibility another prevalent issue is the distribution of CLC's albums or lack thereof it has become incredibly difficult for fans to buy any of CLC's physical albums from before 2018 many attribute this issue to Cube Entertainment changing distributors in 2017 when Universal Music sold their shares in the company and Cube Entertainment was urged to sign a distribution deal with Luen, now known as Kakao M. This, however, does not at all explain CLC's distribution issues, since copies of early releases from CLC's junior group Pentagon are still in print. Besides this, CLC merchandise is sparse and becoming near impossible to find once it sells out possibly because Cube Entertainment believes CLC not to be profitable enough, despite their album sales steadily increasing over the years. Besides this, it's been common for Soren to take on part of Cube Entertainment's marketing duties. She's often promoting CLC's releases on social media, with Soren even having to bring it to Cube Entertainment's attention that Helicopter was not available on iTunes at its release after fans pointed it out to her. Not only that, but Sorn often takes it upon herself to travel abroad to promote the group. In 2019, Sorn requested for Cube Entertainment to clear her schedule to travel to Thailand where she would appear on TV and radio shows to promote CLC. But it is alleged that Sorn was obligated to cover the travel expenses herself, despite this being a work commitment where she is working in the name of the company to promote CLC which is something that Cube Entertainment failed to do for the group. Recently, the first episode of Mnet's survival show Girls Planet 999 aired. Fans were initially surprised to see Eugen among the participants, insinuating that Cube Entertainment had forced her to go on the show. But during the pre-audition interview, Eugen confirmed once more that Cube Entertainment no longer intended on investing in the group. Eugen went on to say that she wanted to participate in order to fulfill her own dreams, something that Cube Entertainment could not provide for her. And finally, Sorn returned with her Produce Sorn series on her YouTube channel, but in the same video announcing her return, Sorn also revealed that all the previous content on the channel had been deleted 
without going into exact detail as to why. Most plausible is that there was an internal issue with Cube Entertainment, possibly because Sorn wanted sole ownership over the channel after being dismissed by Cube. But since Cube Entertainment most likely owned half of the channel and its content, Sorn would be forced to delete the videos that were co-owned by the label. Given the current circumstances, it is uncertain what the future holds for CLC. Considering that it's been nearly a year since the release of Helicopter, as well as the fact that Cube Entertainment communicated that they would no longer provide developmental support for the group. Much like for a minute, it feels as if Cube Entertainment has given up on CLC. Even though Cube Entertainment didn't give the group the means to explore their full potential, holding them back by limiting their releases over the years and eventually entirely abandoning CLC under the guise of not being successful enough. Moving forward, Cube Entertainment would start to rely on its artists to produce their music on their own. One of these self-producing artists is Pentagon, who made their debut in 2016 after competing on the survival show Pentagon Maker, where 10 trainees had to obtain the five skills of vocals, rap, dance, mind, and teamwork in order to debut. Yenan and Shinwon were initially eliminated because they hadn't fully developed all five skills, but both trainees ended up becoming a part of the final lineup later on. The 10 members debuted with Gorilla on October 9th of 2016. Remarkable is that Pentagon's comebacks became more frequent starting from 2017 when member Hui picked up on composing. Hui first gained notability after producing 101's Energetic. In September of 2017, Pentagon would release their first self-produced album, Demo One, with member Kino providing the choreography for its title track like this. Pentagon's first self-produced album was followed by the release of its sequel, Demo Two, in November of that same year. But much like CLC, Pentagon struggled to gain recognition from the general public. That was until Pentagon released Shine in April of 2018, becoming a sleeper hit with a song originally charting at 500 on the Melon chart. As more people found out about the song, it eventually peaked at number 16. Pentagon had never experienced such success before. The success of Shine resulted in Cube extending the promotional period for the release. The group was at the height of its popularity when the dating scandal struck. Fans were up in arms over the news, causing damage to the group's reputation, even losing some of its fan base. Pentagon released Naughty Boy in the midst of the commotion, with not only Edon but also Yenan being absent due to health reasons. The effect of the dating scandal and the popularity of Shine simmered on with the release of Naughty Boy. But besides extending the promotional period, Q Entertainment failed to schedule variety show appearances, interviews, and other promotional activities to help boost the popularity of the group. Perhaps because the company didn't know how to simultaneously handle Pentagon's sudden breakthrough, as well as Ken and Edon's dating scandal. As mentioned in the previous video, Edon's contract with Cube Entertainment was terminated. He then left the company, starting anew, signing with P Nation, redebuting as a solo artist, now going by the name of Don, making his debut on November 9th of 2019 with Money. Pentagon had built a steady fan base, but as new releases poured in, the public would slowly but surely forget about Pentagon again. Yenan made his return to the group with the release of Shalala, but would go on hiatus again in the summer of 2019 due to medical reasons, causing the idol to miss out on the promotions for Humph as well as Pentagon's first world tour. Yenan's ongoing hiatus left fans feeling worried because there were little to no updates concerning the idol's future within the group. Yenan took to Weibo himself in December of 2019 to provide an update for concerned fans. I've long been ready to get back, however the company has never given me any news on when I could go back. I always ask the company, but there have been no clear instructions yet. 
Fans then demanded a response from Cube, but this demand went by unheard, and Cube Entertainment never provided any type of clarification for Yanan's prolonged absence, essentially keeping Yanan from participating in the recording and promotional activities for two albums, as well as competing on the survival show Road to Kingdom and saying his goodbyes to fellow member Jin Ho before enlisting. On September 17th of 2020, Cube Entertainment posted a video to social media officially confirming the return of Yinan to Pentagon, finally putting an end to the 440 day long hiatus. At last, Pentagon was rewarded with their first music show win with the release of Daisy on SBS's The Show after four years of actively promoting. Not only that, but the album Weeth also became their highest selling album, showing that Pentagon's fan base continues to grow as time progresses. It is unclear what Pentagon's next move will be given that Pentagon's leader Hui, who's largely responsible for producing Pentagon's music, enlisted after the release of Do or Not on March 15th of 2021. Q Entertainment has become heavily dependent on the vital role Hui plays within the group. So for this reason, it is unsure if the entertainment company will now depend on the remaining members to produce Pentagon's releases for the time being, or if they expected Hui to plan ahead, or is Cube Entertainment itself going to step up to the plate to help the group out? The latter seems unlikely though, as Cube Entertainment seems to have become almost dependent on their artist's ability to self-produce. This would become even more apparent with the debut of their next group. On April 5th of 2018, Cube Entertainment revealed the name of their upcoming girl group, Idol. Members Soyeon, Mian, Minnie, Sujin, Ugi, and Shuha were introduced through a street performance at Hongdae. Soyeon was already known by the public for her participation on Produce 101 alongside Unbin and her participation on the third season of Unpretty Rap Star. Prior to her debut as a member of Idol, Soyeon released the singles Jelly and Idol Song. The latter formed the inspiration behind the name Idol. On May 2nd of 2018, the group debuted with La Tata. The music video managed to draw in 5.9 million curious viewers in its first week, and the debut single performed well on the charts, with the debut album I Am entering the Gaon chart at number 13, as well as the Billboard World Album charts at number 5. La Tata itself debuted at number 35 on the Gaon Digital chart. Idol would become the fastest cube artist and the second fastest girl group to win first place on a music show, receiving their first win only 22 days after debut. The group went on to receive two more music show wins for the release of La Tata and their debut album I Am ended up selling over 50,000 copies. The debut was a success. Idol had managed to capture the audience interest with their self-produced sound, charisma, and unique vocal tones. But Idol did not owe their instant success to Cube Entertainment's efforts, when things leading up to the group's debut had been anything but smooth. Cube Entertainment kept delaying Idol's debut because the company didn't have a title track for the Idols to perform, keeping things stagnant. Soyeon took the fate of the group into her own hands, deciding to write a song by herself. She used her previous experience in writing rap lyrics and took classes to learn how to compose. Soyeon taking the initiative to produce the debut song defined Idol's identity and more importantly, the group's early on success. The release of La Tata would make or break Idol's career. It became a pivotal moment to Cube Entertainment where it would prove whether the group was worth investing in, and luckily, it did play out well. Otherwise, Idol's career might have looked entirely different, but because of this, Q Entertainment now viewed Soyeon as Idol's main writer, producer, and composer when this never was Soyeon's intention, putting a lot of pressure on Soyeon for Idol's future releases to perform well. Hum, the group's first digital single was released on August 14th of 2018. This release was again written and co-composed by Soyeon. 
The music video for Han surpassed 4.9 million views in just 24 hours and topped domestic charts like Bugs, Genie, and Ole. The title track also made an international impact, peaking at number two on the Billboard World Digital Song Sales Chart and becoming the top selling K pop song in the United States for two consecutive weeks. Idol managed to gain another three music show wins with the release of Han and also went on to win 10 Rookie of the Year awards on several end of the year award shows. Within the first year of their career, Idol already had several remarkable achievements under their belt, making them a fierce competitor, setting the bar high for the fourth generation of K-pop, even more so proving to be a worthwhile investment to Cube Entertainment as the entertainment company's 2018 music sales increased by 58% because of Idol's popularity alone. Starting off the year 2019, Idol appeared on their first reality show to Neverland, premiering on YouTube on January 14th. The reality show followed the group on their trip to San Francisco. While on their trip, the idols teased their upcoming comeback when self-recording a music video to blow your mind from their upcoming album that was written and composed by many. The music video would be released on February 19th as the reality show came to a close, leading up to the release of Senorita the following week. The single was praised by Billboard, describing it as a Latin pop-themed dance track that incorporates castanets and jazzy brass horns alongside groovy rhythmic strings and sleek electronic effects. Its international recognition was represented on the US World Digital Song Sales Chart, where it peaked at number 7, also marking the group's third entry on the chart. Senorita initially entered the Gaon Digital Chart at number 30, and later peaked at number 19, but topped the charts of Bugs and Genie, this time gaining the group a single music show win. The release of their second mini album, I Made, saw a significant increase in album sales, showing that the support for the group had grown exponentially since their debut. I Made was almost entirely written and co composed by Soyan, except for Minnie's Blow Your Mind making it clear that Cube Entertainment heavily relied on Soyeon's efforts as a lyricist and producer. In June of 2019, Idol would release their second digital single titled Uh Oh. The single was heavily inspired by 90s hip hop, written by Soyeon to tell off everyone who didn't believe she could become an idol. Uh Oh peaked at number 31 on the Gaon Digital chart and at number 7 on the US World Digital Song Sales Chart. The group collected another single music show win for the release. Idol would then become the first Cube artist to compete on Mnet's Queen Slash Kingdom series. The show aired weekly from August through October, providing an ideal opportunity for the members to show off various sides of Idol, gaining much praise for their reimagined versions of La Tata and Put It Straight. The performance videos currently sit at 15 and 22 million views on YouTube. As Queenum aired, it was reported that Cube Entertainment had partnered with E2PR and Strategic Communications in September of 2019 to establish a promotion team for handling Idol's international public relations. As Queenum came to a close, the survival program demanded for all competing acts to release a comeback single resulting in the release of Lion on October 25th of 2019. Although the release didn't experience much success at the beginning, not even entering the Gaon chart, but this quickly changed once the final episode of Queenum aired and the song rose 89 spots, eventually peaking at number 19. The release of Lion gained Idol a lot of recognition, with many calling it the song of the year. While they might not have won Queendom, Idol managed to captivate the hearts of national and international viewers alike, gaining them an influx of support. On April 6th of 2020, Idol's Oh My God was released. Oh My God continued the storyline of Lion, reaching 17 million views in only 24 hours, breaking the group's previous record. The title track also topped eight major Korean music charts, making it the group's second time to top the charts since the release of Han. Besides this, Oh My God went on to collect four music show wins, making it their most awarded release thus far. 
The album I Trust was fully written and co-composed by Soyeon, even including an English version of Oh My God for international fans to enjoy, with the intention of performing it during their first world tour. This tour would unfortunately have to be cancelled due to the outbreak of the pandemic. Despite this minor setback, I Trust became Idol's best-selling album since debut, selling 112,075 copies in its first week. Making Idol the fourth girl group to achieve this, the album also made its mark internationally as it topped the iTunes chart in 62 countries. Cube Entertainment would utilize this international popularity by signing Idol to US label Republic Records to help push the group into the US market. The release of I Trust went to show that Idol's popularity had grown exponentially since their debut only two years ago. In August of 2020, Idol returned with Dum Dee Dum Dee. This would be another successful release for the group as it became the second best-selling girl group single album in history with 94,587 initial sales and it topped the iTunes chart in 42 countries as well as breaking their previous record when the music video garnered 17.6 million views in 24 hours. To top it all off, the group won first place for two weeks in a row on Show Champion, M Countdown, and Inky Gayo, making for a total of six music show wins. January of 2021, Idol returned with La, the title track off their fourth mini album. Topping the charts of Genie Music and Bugs at release, it also succeeded at charting the top ranks in Flow and Vibe. With this, Hua was the first K-pop girl group song to top the nation's top daily song charts since Blackpink's Love Sick Girls. Additionally, Hua is one out of three fourth generation girl group songs to reach the top spot on Melon Real Time. The title track went on to break Idol's own record for highest charted song on the Gaon Digital chart, charting at number four. The song peaked at number six on the Billboard World Digital Song Sales chart giving Idol their 10th top 10 hit. Their album I Burn sold 200,000 copies for the first time in the group's career, with all songs off the album entering the Melon chart for the first time since Idol's debut. With Idol's title tracks ranking higher each comeback and their album sales increasing continuously, Idol has proven itself to be a self-producing success. But at the height of their career, Idol would take a fall when it was met with a bullying scandal. On February 20th of 2021, someone claiming to be the older sibling of a classmate of Soo Jin's came forward accusing Soo Jin of bullying their younger sibling, claiming that Soo Jin took the sibling and a fellow friend into a bathroom slapping the girl across the face and coercing the friend to do the same. The supposed victim then came forward claiming that Sujin often stole money from students, cursed at her peers, and took part in smoking, and also encouraged the others to cast the victim out. The next day, Cube Entertainment posted a statement in response to the allegations made against Sujin, confirming the identity of the victim, stating that they would take legal action against them for making false claims. On March 4th, Cube Entertainment would announce that Sujin would halt activities for the time being and that Idol would temporarily promote with five members. On March 19th, Sujin posted an in-depth statement going over the events, again denying the claims made against her, confirming that the agency and the alleged victims had since held a meeting to discuss the allegations. However, Sujin insinuated that the perpetrators changed their story during the discussion. Sujin concluded the statement saying that she would accept any punishment given, even if it meant leaving the group. If there was any actual proof of her being in the wrong, that same day, Cube Entertainment filed a criminal complaint at the Gangnam police station, stating that an investigation would take place to bring out the truth and to hold the pair responsible for the harmful claims made against the idol. In recent news, Cube Entertainment confirmed that Sujin would leave Idol. The sudden news shocked fans since Cube Entertainment had always spoken out in support of Sujin during the controversy. 
Some suspected that Sujin's departure was the result of actress So Shin speaking out against the idol after Sujin denied having bullied the actress, while others theorized that Cube Entertainment had terminated Sujin's contract back in March, but put off announcing this to the public in order to avoid angering fans even more. Either way, Cube Entertainment failed to do the one thing they had promised, to protect their artist. The past has shown that Cube Entertainment has difficulty handling controversies pertaining to its artist. Think of Hyuna and Don's dating scandal. Instead of protecting their artist, Cube Entertainment tends to abandon their artist when the going gets tough, in a desperate attempt to save its own reputation at the cost of that of their own idols. As of right now, it appears that Cube Entertainment is focusing on solo promotions for Idol, with Uki making her solo debut on May 13th of 2021 with A Page, consisting of the songs Bonnie and Clyde and Giant, the latter being written by Uki herself. That same month, it was announced that Soyeon was preparing to make her first solo comeback since 2017, releasing her album Windy on July 5th, promoting the title track Beam Beam on music shows, even going on to win two music show wins for the title track. Idol's achievements have been nothing short of remarkable, undoubtedly making up for the loss of Cube Entertainment's flagship groups in 2016, with Idol's national and international success surpassing that of their senior groups, becoming Cube Entertainment's best-selling girl group to date. But Idol's success is purely the result of the members' own effort, and that is not up for questioning. If it weren't for Soyeon, Idol wouldn't be where they are today. Because of this success, it is often said that Idol is favored. Even though the members face their own difficulties at the hands of Cube Entertainment's management, it's apparent that Cube Entertainment did very little to support the group early on. But once Idol proved to be successful, Cube Entertainment shifted their focus. Of course, this only makes sense because the company is investing into a profitable artist. But the issue is that they fail to do the same for all of their artists. Admittedly, the word favoritism has been weaponized against the group and its members, by upset fans who unfairly shift the blame for the mistreatment of other idols onto idol, discrediting their success, making them yet another one of Cube Entertainment's scapegoats to avert attention from the actual issue, the company's failure of supporting their artists. More so than favoring artists, Cube Entertainment prefers artists that self-produce, as it takes pressure off the company and instead puts the pressure on the idol. But Cube Entertainment's creative freedom comes at a price, as the company often implies the role of producer onto one of the idols, saddling them up with the sole responsibility of making the group successful. And in case the group is not successful, Cube Entertainment can now blame the idol for failing to produce profitable music, without the company having to take the fall for it making the stakes of becoming successful even higher. One time Cube Entertainment did decide to invest in an artist, the company crossed an important boundary. On July 20 of 2019, former 101 member Lai Guanlin requested for his contract with Cube Entertainment to be terminated. Cube Entertainment confirmed the news with the following statement. It is true that we received a letter of notification about the termination of our exclusive contract with our artist Lai Guanlin from a legal representative claiming to represent him. However, nothing has occurred between the agency and Lai Guanlin to give grounds for contract termination. Three days later, the idol's legal representatives provided clarification on why their client requested for his contract with Cube Entertainment to be terminated stating that Cube Entertainment sold Lai Guanlin's exclusive management rights within China to Ta Joy Entertainment, a third party without the idol's or his parents' consent, taking into account that Guanlin was a minor at the time of these events. Guanlin and his family sought out legal support and sent a certification of contents to Cube Entertainment demanding for this management issue to be resolved, but no changes were made by Cube Entertainment. The company claimed that there was no breach of contract and refused to have any further discussions on it, resulting in Lai Guanlin taking legal action against the company. 
Cube released a statement in which they denied ever signing a contract without the idol's approval. There are no grounds for termination according to our contract with Lai Guanlin. While carrying out Lai Guanlin's management duties, we explained and received approval before carrying out any scheduled activities or signing contracts. We received Lai Guanlin's approval to sign a contract with a Korean third-party company for the selection of a management company in China that was necessary for Lai Guanlin's advancement into China. This third-party company signed a contract with a Chinese company that is in charge of Lai Guanlin's Chinese management and he is promoting in China through this company. In this statement, Cube Entertainment went as far as insinuating that an influential third party was trying to gain control over Guanlin and his family by pitting them against Cube Entertainment in order to gain sole power over the idol's success. Guanlin's legal representative refuted Cube Entertainment's outrageous claims. Lai Guanlin has never personally seen the contract that Cube Entertainment drafted to sell his management rights to a third company party. And so, we requested that we be sent the contract in question. However, the response we received from Cube Entertainment was that they believe they are not obligated to provide it to us and if we wish to see it, we must go to them to see it. Also, we question the motive behind Cube Entertainment claiming that there exists a party seeking to have sole control over Lai Guanlin's success by influencing him and his family. This is basically claiming that Lai Guanlin and his family have failed to terminate the contract based on the temptation of economic profit. And this is not something that is said out of concern for Lai Guanlin's future. It can be seen as prompting malicious comments to defame Lai Guanlin and his family. On November 21st of 2019, the Seoul Central District Court dismissed Guanlin's request to terminate his contract with Cube Entertainment meaning that the contract would still remain valid. Naturally, Guanlin and his legal team were displeased with this decision and went on to appeal it, filing for an appellate trial in May of 2020. This was dismissed by the Seoul High Court. Guanlin's legal team then filed a different lawsuit based on the invalidity of Cube Entertainment's contract, followed by four trials regarding the case. Finally, on June 17th of 2021, the court declared Guanlin's contract with Cube Entertainment as invalid. Cube Entertainment would now no longer have any control over the idol. Twenty twenty one saw the introduction of Cube Entertainment's new girl group Lightsum, with Juyoung previously participating on the unit, as well as Choan, Nayoung, and Juyoung participating on Produce Forty Eight in twenty eighteen, prior to the group's debut, revealing members Ju Hyung, Sangha, Choan, Jian, Nayoung, Hyun, Hina, and Junyoung from April nineteenth to April twenty second, debuting with the single Vanilla on June tenth of twenty twenty one performing on M Countdown that same day. The single ranked at number 12 on the Gone chart and has currently sold close to 28,000 copies. Lightsome's concept reverts back to bright colors and a sweet bubblegum pop sound. Perhaps because it's back in trend with the current fourth generation of K-pop, or possibly to contrast the concepts of Lightsome's senior groups. The single also incorporates a beat drop that allows the group to show off its charismatic side as well as its dance skills. It could be that Q Entertainment is attempting to find a balance between the sweet and the spice to make up for their previous conceptual failure. Given the course Q Entertainment is taking, it is difficult to predict what the future holds for Lightsum. Based on Cube Entertainment's track record, it could go either one of two ways, depending on the group's success. Like most rookie groups under Cube Entertainment, Lightsome's debut single has been produced by a team of experienced producers. It is possible that Cube Entertainment will call upon these producers to produce Lightsome's music, which could eventually lead to a lack of comebacks depending on how successful Cube Entertainment expects the group to be. Another likely possibility is that Cube Entertainment will gradually lead the group down the path of self-producing. One of the Lights members, Ju Hyun, has already gained some experience in the area. It could be that Cube Entertainment implies the role of producer onto Ju Hyun, putting the fate of the group in the idol's own hands. But only time will tell what Cube Entertainment has in store for Lights and their remaining artists.
Over the years, Cube Entertainment has shown a consistent lack of support for their artists on all levels, and often blames their artists for the company's own shortcomings. Now they solely rely on the talent of their own artists to avoid having to take responsibility for the company's failures. Besides this, Cube Entertainment keeps seeking ways to expand its business despite failing to provide proper support to the artists it currently houses. Instead, they end up selling out those same artists in the process. It's become apparent that these constant structural changes the company's undergoing is doing their artists more harm than good, and it is in these moments where their artists need the company's support most. But Cube Entertainment deserts their artists entirely when things get rough because they're afraid of experiencing failure. This is why Cube Entertainment is one of the worst entertainment companies. That concludes this two-part analysis on Cube Entertainment. As always, I tried my best to research this topic to the best of my ability, but please be so kind to correct me if any of the information I presented was incorrect or if I missed any parts of crucial information. And also feel free to leave a comment with additional information on this topic because that can be helpful to me or anyone else who wants to learn more about Cube Entertainment. With that being said, Thank you for watching. The letter from me to you. It goes a little something like la 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 la